Thank you very much, Sharon. Now, um, just to continue, the interviews with these women were carried out by Dr. Mary Ryan, head of the Department of Adult and Community Education and co-director of the Counselling and Adult Guidance Programme in Maynooth University. Um, Sinead Inglesby, who is here uh, uh, today, was engaged by the Secretariat <coughs> to undertake the logistical elements of the recording. recordings. Dr. Ryan will provide you with some further details on the interview process um, before we begin. <coughs> After that, we, be we will begin and the voice of a woman will be heard every seven minutes. The, this, each voice will be followed uh, for, um, by a moment for member reflection where the assembly will go into private session for three minutes. Now that's not to say that um, our observers uh, have to leave or the media has to leave. It's just that we'll um, pause the live streaming and the <coughs> televising for the three minutes. Um, finally, I must thank all the women whose voices we will hear today in bringing their voices into this room, into the assembly. Um, we are engaging with real lives and with real lived experiences. These are women bringing their stories to us at our request to help us understand the Eighth Amendment. I'm truly grateful to them. Um, and I just want to make one other observation. I think Anne McCarthy is here, is she? Um, and I, I would have told uh, the members this morning that she's available if anybody needs some feels the need for some assistance from her. I think she's at the back of the room. Yes, Anne, thank you very much. And then I am now going to call on Mary Ryan to give us um, some further background to the stories and to introduce each one. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I know they've been already thanked, but I would like to thank on behalf of Sinead Inglesby and myself, and Sinead is there, uh, to thank the women who so courageously and generously shared their stories with us. This was not an easy or straightforward process for the women involved and provoked many memories, emotions and feelings. But while the stories are deeply personal to them, they're also universal. And they could be about our mothers, sisters, daughters, relations and neighbours. Maybe as you listen to the stories, they may remind you about similar experiences. And they may stir up strong feelings and emotions in you. We hope that this will not prevent you from listening and being present to the stories. While they may be emotional, they are quite normal as well. You may not agree with the decisions described in the stories, but even so, we would really like to encourage you to listen to them in an open and non-judgmental manner. So, just to kind of describe briefly the process Sinead and I used to carry out the interviews. Sinead contacted all of the women and she had a detailed phone conversation with initially describing the interview process. She confirmed that their overall contribution would be edited to a duration of approximately five to seven minutes. And she described the way it would be presented to you today. She made sure that all of the women were comfortable with the fact that ultimately their stories and testimony would be shared more widely than even here. She discussed the possible publicity that might arise following the broadcasting of their personal stories at the Assembly today. And this process of clarification continued at all stages of the interview and editing process. We made it clear to all of the women that they were under no obligation to continue with this process and that they were free to withdraw their consent at any stage. And all of the women were happy to proceed on this basis. And they could even draw, withdraw up to five minutes ago, and they haven't. The interviews ranged from 35 to 70 minutes in duration. Each story is unique and individual. Each woman has a different way of sharing her experience. 
with emphasis on different aspects and details of her deeply personal narrative. The focus of the editing process was to outline each woman's personal circumstances and that of her decision and its impact on her life in a way that would be accessible to those listening. We also needed to ensure that it was reflective of each, woman, each woman's overall conversation in terms of tone, emphasis and opinion. Each of the women has had an opportunity to listen to the edited version of her interview in order to ensure that she feels that it's a fair and accurate summary of her overall contribution and that she continues and is still comfortable with it being presented to the Assembly today. Each of the women has given full consent of their edited interviews to be so presented. In looking and being present and listening to the stories, a number of themes <coughs> emerged from the stories. All of the women welcomed the opportunity to tell their stories to the members of the Assembly and hope in doing so that it will be of benefit to other women in similar situations. For some women, it was their first time to tell their story in public and they saw Sinead and I as representing Irish society and the Assembly. All expressed a need to discuss their concerns about their pregnancy and explore all options in a supportive and non-judgmental setting. Each story is different and complex, shaped by a unique context and time. All of the women feel they made the best decision possible at the time and in that particular context. So what we've decided to do is that we will play each story and give you a period of two to three minutes after the story just for you to write down your reflections before we go into the, no the new story. Your, what you write is confidential to you, it won't be shared, but you might speak out of it later. And what I'll do is draw time at the end of the two to three minutes and we'll go into the next story. So, um,